Welcome to the Overweight Mind Podcast. My name is Jay Nixon, and I'm the best-selling author of The Overweight Mind. This podcast is where the power of positive psychology, mindset, and personal development converge to transform lives. I hope you'll join us on this uplifting journey as we explore the secrets to creating a lifestyle that leads to happiness, health, and wealth. Discover how science of the mind can help you achieve your weight loss goals and unlock your full potential of life. It's where the magic of the mind meets the path to a healthier, wealthier you. Welcome to the show. Before we dive into the show, I want to take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of this episode. It is very dear and near and close to my heart because it is Lori's company, Spa Star. If you ever had the opportunity to watch someone create something from a thought or a vision and make this magical thing actually come to life, well, then you'll know why I'm so extremely proud of her and why I'm so excited to have her sponsoring the Thrive Forever Fit Show. If you've listened to my podcast, then you probably heard her on episode 259. If you haven't heard that, I would go listen to episode 259 as soon as you finish this episode. She talks about the story of, of how she created it, the, the adversity she overcame, the challenges that she worked through, and just the inspirational story that I know you're absolutely going to love. But what Spa Star is, it's, it's a, a luxury wrap, and it was created as a, a spa wrap for people who were getting beauty treatments. But what we found out is it is a piece for everyday life. People are wearing it as swimsuit cover-ups, uh, resort wear, just to get ready in the mornings or for that special event. It is the most unique piece, and I've actually, I've actually worn this thing several times. I was the actual first model for this. Maybe I'll show you guys some photos of that, Fred, when the time is right. But it is such a cool creation called the Get Ready Wrap by Spa Star. And because you're a listener, you get 15% off today because you support me. So just go to spastar.net, spastar.net, the word spa, the word star, .net, and at the checkout, enter Thrive15, T-H-R-I-V-E 15, and you're going to get 15% off of your Get Ready Wrap. So many of my clients already have these and absolutely love them. We're selling them all over the country and all over the world, for that matter, to high-end luxury spas. And to people just like you that are using them inside of their own homes, they're traveling with them, they're using them at the pool. It's so really just unbelievably cool to see and witness. And I'm so blessed to be a part of it. And I'm so blessed to have Lori actually sponsoring my podcast, which I think is really, really cool. So go check out Spa Star. I know you're going to love it. It is the coolest thing ever. And guys, this isn't just for ladies. This is one of the coolest gifts you could get your any female in your life for that magic matter. If Lori hadn't have created it, I would buy them for her as a gift to show her my love and appreciation. So dudes, if you're listening and you need to get a gift for your significant other or some special person in your life, go to spastar.net, grab a get ready wrap. There's all kinds of colors. There's black, there's sage, there's a berry color, there's a um Gosh, I just went blank. There's a kind of a greeny, kind of avocado-y color. Really cool. You're definitely going to love these, I promise. So go to spastar.net, check it out, support Lori. And Lori, thank you for sponsoring the show. Wasting dots, wasting days, wasting your life. So I was recently introduced to this concept of kind of dots being representative of weeks in your life. And I'm, I'm not sure who the, the scientist was, the presenter or, or where it came from, but they had a model kind of on a, on a chart that showed just a bunch of dots on a piece of paper. And it was representative of, I believe, an 18-year-old at the, at the present moment living to be 90. And the number of dots on the page was significant to the days, weeks, months, and years that they had left to live. And then they went on to describe how a lot of those dots are going to be used sleeping, right? A lot of those dots are going to be used working. A lot of those dots will be used um, at your on your commute to work or your commute to go places. A lot of those dots will be used for errands and chores and just normal life things. Um, and then it gave, it kind of gave that whole synopsis of all of the dots that are already kind of like decided for you. 
And then it showed how many dots you'd have left. And then one of the interesting things was it was talking about an, an 18 year old at the time. And it said, unfortunately, an 18 year old will spend the majority of their remaining dots attached to a screen, attached to their phone, attached to the computer, attached to something kind of like we're attached to right now as I'm recording and you're listening, but they'll spend the majority of their dots attached to that thing. And it really got me thinking, it's like, okay, well, I'm obviously not 18, 49 years old. And let's say I live to be 90. Um, the same amount of dots from 49 to 50, I don't plan on retiring from work. It's just probably not in my DNA. I'm going to be somebody who probably works for the rest of their life in some capacity. So a lot of those dots are going to spend doing that. Luckily for me, I absolutely love what I get to do. So I don't really look at that as a negative. I'm going to spend time in the car driving to and from the places that I'm going to do the work. I'm going to spend time doing the errands that I'm, you know, contractually obligated to do as a human, right? Like doing the laundry and grocery shopping and like all of those things. I'm definitely going to spend a lot of that time sleeping. I'm going to really try to limit the amount of time that I'm on that screen now that I saw what I saw. It was really overwhelming. But how am I going to spend the rest of my dots? Really got me thinking. I mean, this this happened at the, the end of last year, and, and I've, I haven't been able to get over it yet. And I hope I don't get over it because it's, it was really profound for me. And it got me it got me kind of doing a, an a overview of how I'm spending my time. And I made a declaration to myself after I, I came across this, and it was like, no wasted dots. I'm going to stop wasting the dots of my life. And then so I said, okay, well, that's that sounds great, Jay, but how are you going to do that? How are you going to stop wasting dots? And what do those dots mean to you? So I went I went kind of down a few rabbit holes and thought about the, the awesomeness of the dots that I get to use. Like they're really my the choices and decisions and the things that I want to be doing, the people I want to be doing it with, and the things and the places and all of those things, all the, the stuff like that. And then I said, okay, well, if, if my goal is no wasted dots, then what's the formula for that? How do I determine if it's a wasted dot? And the easiest thing for me to come up with was this. If a person, place, or thing gives me a net negative output or a net negative outcome, then I need to eliminate it from my life. I mean, I don't think we can go through life and, and, and avoid those things. Sometimes we have those and we're like, okay, hey, that wasn't, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So therefore, I need to remove that from my life. But we don't really do that. We'll continue to, I'm going to use, I'm going to use people as an example, because I think it's a really easy one to understand. So like we all know people that when we spend time with those people, we feel worse about our life, about ourself, about the world, about everything. To me, that's a net negative outcome, a net negative input in my life. So therefore, it must be eliminated. So on the flip side of that is, how do I maximize the net positives, right? The people that I love being around, that when I'm around them, I get charged up and I get rejuvenated and I get happy and I, and I want to go conquer the world. Like you want to spend more dots on those people. And so that was one of the easiest ways I came up with. It's like, okay, if something produces a net negative, then I've got to eliminate it. That could be a place that I go to. That could be as simple as a restaurant that I eat at that I'm always like, ah, gosh, it's really not that good. I don't know why we keep coming back here. Stop going back there. Could be a vacation spot that, I mean, I'm just, I'm so programmed to go to, but I'm like, ah, you know, it's not as fun as it used to be. Stop going there. Go somewhere new. If I've only got a few dots left, right? Not, and not a, hopefully, Jesus, hopefully God, not a few. Like, I didn't mean that literally. But if I've only got a certain number of dots left, and if I live to 90, I want to live to 90 being like healthy and vibrant and 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 just, you know, really enjoying my life. Quality of life is really important to me. And that got me thinking about the next thing I'm going to talk about. And that is my health and my, my fitness related to my dots and the importance of those things. And I've always been somebody who, who I'm not always, but for the last, th yeah, pretty much always. I started working out when I was in the sixth grade. Didn't really eat that great in the sixth grade because you're, you know, you, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. But as I've grown and evolved, I've always been somebody who's put my my health and my fitness and my wellness at, at a peak, at a high level for me. It's really important on my my chart of things that that matter to me. And so 
as I as I age, I want to make sure that those really matter because it becomes more important because you can get away with a lot of things when you're, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 s But as you start to get older, you can't get away with the same foolishness that you could get away with. And then in the work that I get to do, I spend a lot of time with a lot of people who are in a struggle trying to figure out how do I make my dots better? How do I make the health and wellness and fitness dots of my chart? How do I, how do I improve those? And one of the things that I've encountered lately, just a few conversations that I've had, is that everybody really understands what they should be doing. Everybody, let's just go really simplistic, right? Everybody understands they should be sleeping more by getting good quality sleep. Everybody understands they should be moving their body in some capacity. Everybody understands that they should be hydrating, right? Like drinking a lot of water, like really staying hydrated. Everybody understands that they should be watching their food intake. And so they're not over consuming calories. So therefore they don't gain weight. Everybody understands that, you know, sugar is going to be worse for you than protein in high quantities, right? You're going to be better off eating a, a high protein, intelligent carbohydrate and intelligent fat consumption, you know, nutritional intake or diet for lack of a better term. We don't, we can't set ourselves up and have, you know, donuts for every meal and think that we're going to be healthy and fit. I know that's an extreme example, but I'm just, I want, I want you to really understand where I'm going here. A lot of the conversations that I've had lately um, have been really, have been with guys, have been, have been with men. And I really disturbing in some facet, because when I look at my life, um, I, I think of my life as a, as an obligation in some sorts. Now, what does that mean? I have an obligation. I feel Jay Nixon's personal opinion. I have an obligation to be my absolute healthiest, wealthiest, happiest, most abundant, most connected, most intelligent, most jovial, most joyous, most blessed, most grateful person on the planet for myself and for the people that I've entered into engagements of relationship with, meaning mainly Lori. Like Lori signed up to, you know, said, hey, I like you. And I'm like, hey, I like you too. Let's spend the rest of our lives together. Awesome. Cool. Really awesome. So through that contractual obligation, I feel like it is my absolute duty to be the best version of me that I can be for her. She didn't sign up for somebody who doesn't take care of themselves. She didn't sign up for somebody who's broke and doesn't want to provide for their family. She didn't sign up for somebody who wants to be grumpy and mean and you know, curmudgeon all the time. She signed up with somebody who she wants to be happy and blissful and joyous with. She didn't sign up for somebody who wants to be a complainer and negative and all those things. She signed up to be with a positive, abundance-driven, grateful human. So it's my job, it's my obligation to provide that for her. Now that might sound silly to some of you guys, but I really believe that's true. I really believe as, as a man, in, in, that's what I am, and I don't, I don't know the other side of the coin, right? I've never been a female, but I assume you guys feel the same way. I assume you guys feel the same way towards your spouse, your significant other. So like you want to be your very best self for them. And so when I look at my dots and I'm like, okay, well, you know, Lori and I are in this, in this agreement to, to love and be with each other until death do us part. How do I maximize that? How do I make sure that I'm not wasting my dots in the fashion of, of not being the best version of me for her. And so that brings me back to some conversations that I've had. And this is one of the main reasons I wanted to do this, this, this episode today is because if you're saying some of the things that I'm about to say, I want you to really evaluate. I want you to really think about the ramifications, the obligation that maybe you have that you're not living up to. And this isn't a, this isn't a podcast about beating you up or making you feel bad about yourself or anything like that. My goal here is awareness. My goal here is to get you to see things differently. First and foremost, I want you to see your dots. I want you to look at that and, and understand that it's not infinite, right? This game we're playing here is, is a finite game. There will come to an end at some point. So it's not an infinite game. So it's important that we maximize the quality of the game while we get to play it. And that means in all facets. That means mindset, emotional physical, everything. Like we maximize who we are for ourselves because we have to live with ourselves 24-7, 365. And the other people that we've come into contractual obligations with, these include your significant others, 
your friends, your family, if you choose to associate with them, your co the, the humans that you are, that you are bound to by some form of karmic contract, they deserve the best version of you as you deserve the best version of them. Some of the conversations that I've been having are people that don't share that same obligatory contract that I do. And I'm not saying that I'm 100% correct. I don't know. I only know what I know and I know what's important to me. And I know the outcomes that I plan on leaving with the people that I love. And so if you love somebody in your life, this next part might be really important to you. You have to start showing up as that best version of yourself, regardless of how you feel. Now, what does that mean? That means that you're not always going to want to do the things that are necessary to make you a better version of you, but you've got to have an obligation to yourself and to the contract that you sign that you will do those even when you don't feel like it. So let's get to some of the topics that, that came up. Talking to a lot of guys, some, some ladies, but mainly guys on this conversation. And I'll say, hey, man, like I noticed that you're, you're really struggling with some, some health issues. You know, I'll give you an example. Like you're five foot five and you weigh 220 pounds. You're, you've, you've, you've got a heart problem. You're on medication. You're on a CPAP machine. You can't sleep without almost suffocating to death. You're borderline diabetic. You, you, get, you get the jest. And I'm like, what can we do? How can I help you? Like, let me, and, and listen, I, I'm making these phone calls because I just love people. Like, what can I do to help you? Let me give you some advice right now. Free call. Like this isn't somebody who's trying to pay me or anything. This is just somebody who I offered to make a phone call to, to, to help, to, to get them to drive a little bit, to get them to, to want to be better, to maybe see a little bit of that obligation and to see that they're heading down a path of if something happens to them, they're going to leave, they're going to leave a significant other and some beautiful children to fend for themselves. But the conversations don't go as, as as Jay's brain thinks they should go because people don't see the, maybe people just don't see the world as I see it because I think that we see the world as we are, not as it is. And so I think when you're struggling, you struggle to see that your behavior may be the thing that is that is causing the most damage, not only to yourself, but to your loved ones. So the conversations go something like this. I'm like, hey, how are you doing on your on your protein intake? And they'll be like, well, you know, I'm just, you know, I really try. There's The word try comes up a lot. And then I'll say, hey, how are you doing on your movement? Like, you, it, you know, and the person agrees with me at the beginning of the call, says, you know, hey, I need to lose about 50 to 75 pounds. Like, would not be, like, I, I'm, I'd be better off if I lost 75 pounds. Like, I'm that far overweight. I can't breathe at night. I have to wear a machine. My heart is under a lot of stress. I'm probably going to be diabetic in the next 15 to 20 pounds. That's going to cause more problems in my liver, my kidneys, my pancreas. Like I'm in, I'm not in good shape. Okay. Hey, we get it. Right? That's been clarified. But the word try just keeps popping up. I'm like, okay, how about going for a walk first thing in the morning, getting up in the morning and just going for a, going for a 15 to 20 minute walk. Well, you know, mornings aren't great for me. You know, I'm really, I'm tired in the morning and, and you know, I just, you know, I kind of get a slow start. I'm not really a morning person. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. How about lunch? How about instead of taking that hour long lunch break, we eat for 30 minutes and then we go for like a 30 minute walk after lunch. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes my schedule, you know, I'm kind of in a hurry that really doesn't work and, and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, cool. Okay, how about dinner? Like work's done, you eat dinner. Let's go for a 30 minute walk with the family after dinner. Well, you know, after dinner, we really like to connect and, you know, and, and, and you know, talk and, and just kind of sit around and whatever, and I, I don't think they understand that if they keep going the way they're going, there won't be any sitting around connecting. Right, I don't know if I'm the only one that sees this. There won't be any time for that. You won't be here. If you look at the dot perspective, you are wasting dots every single day. And eventually, if you waste enough dots, you will run out of dots faster than you should. Now that's a really that's a really just crude example, for lack of a better term, of just trying to get somebody to change behavior. And then I'll say, okay, well, hey, let's let's talk about hydration instead. Let's just talk about getting really hydrated. What are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking a lot of sodas and, and some Kool-Aid and some Gatorade and some sweet tea. And I'm like, okay, 
you're aware that all of that is, is full of sugar and the things that are causing you the problems that are causing you. Yeah, 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 but I just don't like water. And I say this, I do, I say this, and it, it pains me to say it, but I, I, sometimes I think you've got to shock people into maybe thinking differently. And I'm like, can I ask you, do I have permission to ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. Jay, I'm Jay of course you do, brother. Knock it, what do you got? Do you dislike water enough to leave your family in the situation you're going to leave them in? Well, what do you mean? If you keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to be here for these beautiful people that you contr you're contractually obligated to because you don't like water? Oh, huh. I never thought of it like that. Okay. What about this movement piece? Like you're too, you say you're too busy to just move your body. And they'll say, well, yeah, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm busy. I'm like, do you realize that like when you're gone, that won't matter? Like it's, so I just try to get them to restructure their entire day. You got to start seeing things differently if you want things to be different. Like old keys won't open new doors. Everybody says they want, they want, they want, but they'll try, they'll try, they'll try. Eventually, guys, eventually, ladies, eventually, humans, we're going to have to start doing the different things that improve the quality of our life, that improves the number of dots that we get on the page. Because if you're like me, and let's just, I like, I like simple math. Let's just say 50. And if I live to be 90, which statistically speaking, most of us won't live to be 90. And, and, and if we do, most of us won't live to be 90 in a healthy fashion. It'll be something we don't want. And if we're going to have to spend a certain amount of time of that 50 years, right? Not 50 years, but the, the next 40 years sleeping, right? Let's just say eight hours, eight hours a day. That's going to eat up a chunk of time. Let's say working or doing something, something, you know, that, that quote unquote, we don't want to do like work. Let's just call it work. That's going to eat up a chunk of time. Driving in the car to go to the work, to go to the errands, to go to the grocery store, to go to the places, that's going to eat up a chunk of time. Doing your normal human activities, paying bills, doing laundry, cooking dinner, that's going to eat up a chunk of time. Not to mention the time that we waste on these, these crazy things. Right? How many dots are left? Not many. I mean, let's be, let's be realistic and honest. There's not many dots left. I consider myself to be a, a pretty healthy person for, the, for all things considered. I don't have a lot of free dots left. I'm not sad about that. I'm not, this isn't a, this isn't a, oh, oh my gosh, let's, let's scare the crap out of people podcast. This is a awareness wake up call. You don't have that many dots left that you get to decide what you want to do with those dots. And let's go back to the wasting of the dots. Every day that you spend not getting healthier is a day that is a dot that you're removing from your chart. Every week you spend is a dot you're removing from your chart. Every month you spend, you get what I'm saying? Like as we move forward in an unhealthy capacity, our dots diminish. I don't know about you. But I'm not looking to give away any dots. I'm not looking to spend my remaining dots attached to a machine to help me breathe while I sleep. And if you're in that situation, I feel for you. But here's what I know. It's not required or mandatory. I've got clients right now that have been on a CPAP machine and are no longer on a CPAP machine. I've got clients right now that are on a CPAP machine and on their way to getting off of it. It is not a mandatory thing. You don't quote unquote, just have sleep apnea. You have done something or are doing something that requires you to have to have that mask on. It's just truth, right? You're not required to be on heart medication because you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds overweight. You're not required to have to take metabolic medication because you're borderline and or diabetic unless you were born that way right unless you have a, a, a system system defect that you were born with i not talking about that i'm talking about self-induced situations that we have control over if you continue to do those 
you're diminishing dots faster than ever before. And if you start to look at it like that, through this perspective, through this lens, maybe you'll make some changes. Maybe you'll say there's going to be no more wasted dots because this is too valuable. And the reason I brought up the, the contractual obligation that I feel is because I know some people some people need a, need a model outside of themselves that they're that they need to live for, right? I'm not one of those people. Like even if I was by myself, I would feel this exact same way because I feel like I I was put here on earth with with the purpose and with the mission, and it wasn't to suffer. But now that I've got this new and amazing piece of, of the puzzle that I get to have another human being in my life, as long as we both can stay healthy, God willing, then, oh my gosh, am I obligated? Oh my gosh, am I doubling down on the seriousness and severity of how I look at this particular incident? Like I am unwilling to waste my dots because I'm too caught up in thinking that it's so hard thinking it's going to be a struggle. I'm going to use the L word. It's going to hurt some feelings that I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy to live the life that I was born to live. That's a stinger. I know it is. I 100% know it is. Nobody wants to be called lazy, right? And I'm not necessarily calling you lazy. You have to make that decision on your own. I think it's very difficult for another human to look at another human and say, well, that person's lazy. You may have those thoughts because of their behavioral patterns that you get to see, but that person knows. Like, you know if you're lazy or not. And I don't mean lazy like you took a damn break. I don't mean lazy because you took a nap. I'm talking about lazy in the, in, the, in the grand context of unmotivated. You're just unmotivated to be your best. That's a different level. But if that's not you, and you're just in the struggle right now of trying to figure it out, do that word again, try, want to, should, all of those things. The number one thing we've got to do is we've got to make a decision that our dots are worth it. What, however you want to quantify your dot, right? If your dot is just you and you want to live it for you, then go at it. If your dot is you and your significant other, then that gives you a little more power. If your dot is you, your significant other, and your family, that's really cool. If your dot's you, your significant other, your family, and then for me, all my clients, like I've got to be an example. Like I have an obligation to be an example for the people that trust me. I can't tell you how many, Jay, what do you think about this? Jay, what do you think? If people are willing to tap it, to, to get, send me a text, to give me a call. I had a call with, with one, of my, one of my great friends yesterday. And he said, hey, man. Would you have time in your schedule? He sent me this message earlier in the week. Would you have time in your schedule to answer a few questions for me? I'm not getting the information that I feel like that I need to get from my, my medical provider. And you're the only person that I trust. You, you understand the severity and the weight of a message like that? You're the only, you bet you're, you, yes, we can, yes, we're going to get on the phone. 100% we're going to get on the phone then I'm going to help you. That's my obligation. And that person who reached out to me and said that understands who I am and that I take this seriously, that it is my obligation. And that's why they feel comfortable sending me that message. You've got to be that. Right? So I don't get, I don't, I don't get to waste dots. Right? And there's such an awareness for me because I was wasting a few. I was wasting a few dots on some silly stuff. No more, right? And that, that opportunity that I got yesterday to talk, to talk to my friend to help them, it's not a wasted dot. Like we both, we both used a dot appropriately yesterday. So how are you using your dots? That's the first question I'd ask myself. How am I using my available dots? What's the net? What's the net of those? Is it a net positive? Which means, hey, that's a good utilization of a dot. Or is it a net negative? Which means, what the heck? Why on earth would I spend my time, my energy, my dot with this person at this place doing this thing that is actually diminishing the number of dots that I get the opportunity to use for the rest of my life? 
The number one thing I want you to understand right now, I want you to hear this. You don't have as many dots as you think you've got. That was my number one awareness. I don't have as many dots as I thought I had. That's a pretty eye-opening, that's a pretty eye-opening awareness to, to, to get, to garner. And then if the next thing was, I'm definitely wasting a few dots. I'm wasting some, some time on some people, places, and things that are, that are bringing me net negative value. I've got to eliminate those. I just have to, right? You know why I have to? It goes back to my obligation. My obligation to live my most purposeful, abundant life and my obligation, my contractual obligation that I signed into with Lori when she said, hey, dude, I like you enough to spend the rest of my life with you. And I said, me too, right? So that's how, that's how important it is. And that's why I'm unwilling to waste anymore. And then when I look at the page and I, and, I, and I map the dots, it's like, how do I want to spend those dots? Do I want to just spend them just getting by? Or do I want to spend them like maximizing them? Like, I mean, just having a, just living the most grateful, joyous and abundant life that I can possibly live. Like to me, there's no other way. Like I can't fathom the thought of looking at my dots and saying, eh, whatever, like, whatever, I'll try to, I'll try to be better. I'll try to, you know, mitigate this disease state. I'll try to get this sleep, sleep apnea under control. I'll try to, you know, maybe get in shape so I can lose a little weight so that I'm, you know, not going to cease to exist before my time should come. And then I'll just leave my family to fend for themselves. Like, especially as a man, I just can't get it. I just can't get it. Like I see so many men that just aren't showing up, are not showing up in life, aren't showing up for themselves, aren't showing up for them fam their families, aren't showing up for the, the people that look up to them, aren't being a role model at home, at work, in their community, in life. Like, I mean, one thing we need right now, and I, I'm speaking, right, I'm saying men right now because I can relate. Like, I understand the capacity. I also have a significant other that is an absolute stud of a human being. Like, she's going to show up every single day and try to make the world a better place. She's going to fulfill her obligations. She's going to make the war anybody that she touches healthier and happier and, and more abundant. Like, so I get it. I see what, I see what, what women are capable of. Because I, 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 I get the opportunity to live with a role model that everybody should be trying to emulate. Makes me want to be a better man. But as a man, when I look at other men and I, and, I, and I look at the sloppiness that we now think is okay, I look at the absolute sloppiness that we are willing to show up in this world as, and it, it breaks my heart first and foremost. It pisses me off because I know it's not necessary. And it, it gets me fired up, to be honest with you. Like I've had some, in, in the for just this first of the year, I've had some tough conversations with some men that I know. Coming from a place of love, like coming from a place, my first statement is always, hey brother, if I didn't love you, I would not be able to have this conversation with you. Because here's the fact, people who love you will hold you accountable. If you have a man in your life that you love, you need to start holding him accountable. Because not holding somebody accountable is not love. And I'm not talking about beating somebody up and tearing them down and being demonstrative and calling them. That's not what this is about. This is about saying, I love you and you aren't living up to the expectations that I know that you have for yourself or that I have for you. And that's, hard, that's tough to hear. I've had several of those conversations with some men this year. And I'm happy to say they've gone better than I thought they would. I haven't had a whole lot of FUJs or never reach out to me again or but they may be they may be saying that. And listen, that's fine. That is fine. But if I love you and you're in my life, I cannot. I will not. I refuse to watch it any longer. So if you're in my life and you're not doing the things that I'm talking about, you either want to change your number Block my number, or when I reach out to you, let's talk about it and let's figure out a plan. Let's figure out a plan on how we how we maximize some dots. 
right? Because that's really what this is all about. Taking the dots that we've got left and doing something valuable with them. Creating a life that's absolutely worth living. And to me, what that means, again, Jay Nixon's opinion and, and theories and thoughts, that means being your healthiest, your wealthiest, your most connected, your most abundant, your happiest, your most joyous, blissful, grateful self. If you're not doing all of those things, then you got to look at your dots and you got to see where you're having some net negative impacts and you got to get rid of those because it's just too important. It's just too valuable. And we got to get rid of a few words. So before we go, I want to agree we're going to get rid of some words. We're going to stop trying. We're going to stop doing. We're going to stop wishing and wanting, and we're going to start doing. We're going to start taking action. So no more trying, no more wishing and wanting, no more, no more, well, I should, but I'm too big. No more. Because that's the only way it changes. When you refuse to believe your own nonsense, and you're like, no more, and you throw the gauntlet down, then you'll have an opportunity to start looking at your dots and making better decisions around those dots. Guys, I love you. And if I didn't, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to have this chat. I would just let you be and, and just keep doing it. But I think it's just too important. I think life is so valuable and amazing and awesome that I just can't sit by and, and watch it anymore. I can't. So I hope you got some value out of this. I hope you actually take this podcast and you share it with somebody that you love. Because remember, if you love somebody, you'll hold them accountable. You won't allow them to be a lesser version of themselves than you know they're capable of. And I can tell you right now, I'm seeing a lot of people walking around as not the best version of themselves. I'm seeing a lot of people out there that aren't taking care of themselves from a physical standpoint. I'm seeing a lot of people who aren't taking care of themselves from a financial standpoint and their families. I'm seeing a lot of people that, that aren't taking care of themselves from an emotional standpoint. And guess what? Secret, tip, hack. You start taking care of yourself physically, your emotional state gets way better. All right? It doesn't go the other way. You don't get emotionally fit and then decide and then think you're going to get physically fit. You're going to need to get physically fit first and then your emotions, your feelings are going to start to change for the better. I believe we're all capable. I really do. I believe we've all got an, the, the opportunity to be the best versions of ourselves. Do I think everybody will? Absolutely not. Just not, just not reality. But I think there's a few people, and that's why I do this. If I can get, if I got to, if I got through to one or two of you today, and you make a difference in your life, or you send this to, to everybody you know that needs to hear it and it makes a difference in their lives, then I'm I'm doing what I gotta do. I'm doing I'm doing the work that I was put here to do. So I appreciate you. I love you. I'm thankful you listen to the show. I'm thankful that you allow me to be a piece and a part of your life. I'm unbelievably grateful for it. I don't take it for granted. And I hope this helped. I'll see you soon. Love you. I hope you guys enjoyed that show as much as I did. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I am so thankful and so grateful that you take the time to listen to the show every week. And it means the absolute world to me. If you've got a little bit of time, it would mean everything if you would go and give the show a five-star re review on whatever platform you're listening on, as well as share it with a friend or family member that you think might find value in the show. And again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being an awesome human and listening to the Overweight Mind podcast. Thanks, and we'll see you again next week. All right, bye.